Okay, when you're trying to solve by substitution method, you want to take one of the equations and solve it for one of the variables. It doesn't really matter which one. Okay. Um, in this case, I'm going to solve for y in the second equation. The reason I'm doing that is because all of these numbers are divisible by 2, so I know when I divide by the negative 2 in front of the y, I won't be left with any fractions. Could have done the same thing with equation 1 and solve for x, because since there's a negative 2 in front of it and all the other things are divisible by 2, I wouldn't have any fractions. If I had done it for the opposite variables, I would have ended up with fractions. So let's start with the second equation. So I have 6x minus 2y equals 20, and I'm going to solve it for y. So I have negative 2y is equal to negative 6x plus 20. I did that by just subtracting 6x from both sides. Then I want to divide both sides by negative 2. So this is the part I was talking about because I'm dividing by the number in front of the y, and all of this stuff is divisible by 2. I know it won't have any fractions. So I have y is equal to, I'm going to divide each of these terms by negative 2. So negative 6x divided by negative 2 plus 20 divided by negative 2. So y is equal to 3x minus 10. So what this equation tells me now is that as soon as I figure out what x is, I'll automatically know what y is by just plugging it in. So this is going to be an important equation in a minute. I just first need to figure out what x is. I'm going to do that by using the, sec the second equation, and this equation is labeled number 1, so negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 16, so I guess I should say the other equation. And instead of putting a y here because I can't solve this um, for x because then it'll just be in terms of y. So the only way I can solve an equation is if it only has one variable. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get rid of this y by plugging this expression in to this value for y. That will give me an equation with only one variable. So this is going to go here. Okay, so we have negative 2x minus 4, but instead of writing y, I'm going to write 3x minus 10 equals negative 16. Well, now I have an equation with one variable, and I can solve that uh, for x, no problem. So I just do negative 2x minus 12x plus 40 equals negative 16, negative 14x plus 40 equals negative 16. Now let's subtract 40 from both sides. So that gives me negative 14x equals negative 56. And then I want to divide both sides by negative 14. So x is equal to 4. So now I know what x is. And I need to find y using this value. Remember over here we said as soon as I know what x is, I'll know what y is, because y is 3 times x minus 10. So now all I need to do is substitute this in for that x. This is um, sometimes known as back substitution. Some people call it that. Um, so this would be first substitution, and this would be the back substitution. Now, I like to set mine up in this way where I have one of the equations solve it for y, or for one of the variables, the other equations solve it for that variable, then put it back in, because then I have this kind of nice circular pattern, and it makes it easy if you always kind of have a similar pattern to all of your problems. So now I just need to do is put a 4 in for x, so we have 3 times 4 minus 10, so y is equal to 12 minus 10, so y is equal to 2. So, because this represents where these two lines intersect, I need to write it as an ordered pair. So x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 2. So the solution is 4, 2.